G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I've got my coffee this morning, I'm ready to go. And uh, today we're gonna be doing a potentially weekly trade update video. Essentially what's gonna happen is pretty much like every Wednesday I'm gonna wake up and have a look at are there any interesting trade narratives going on and uh, there's a handful to talk about today. As we get later in the season, this is probably gonna be more and more prevalent. And uh, I think last couple of trade periods I've been making daily content just about trades. So it is one of my favorite times of the year. And this year, like every other year, there is plenty to talk about. I don't think we're gonna see the same level of big name switching clubs as we've seen in previous years but obviously there's so much more going on in the AFL trade scheme these days with the advent of academy players and clubs needing to accumulate points and pick swaps and stuff like that there's just so much more going on it's more interesting than ever more strategic than ever in today's video we're probably going to just talk mostly about a number of big names that might potentially switch clubs before we crack into the latest trade rumors guys we're nearly at 50 percent of people who watch the channel regularly who have actually subscribed to the channel so i've set the goal of getting it up to 50 percent we've crept back up to 47 percent. so thank you very much guys if you haven't subscribed already and you are enjoying the content it would mean a lot to me it's a big focus of mine right now as you can tell because I'm talking about this a lot to try and grow the channel as much as possible by the end of the season. Obviously, the content is flowing thick and fast at the moment. Uh, I did a tr uh, mock draft yesterday, which seems to be relatively well received so far. So thank you very much for that. So if you're interested in trade and draft content, and of course, most important of all, the AFL final series, it would be great if you could subscribe and you can keep up with the videos. Cool. So the first topic we're going to talk about is the uh, is Damien Hardwick is now coach of the Gold Coast Suns, right? I haven't actually addressed that on this channel yet, but if you didn't know, that is the case. I'm sure you do know. And uh, as a result, there has been a little bit of murmurings of players from Richmond leaving the Tigers and joining the Gold Coast Suns to play under Hardwick. And this comes at an interesting time for both clubs now. The Gold Coast Suns were obviously, it feels like on the brink of shooting into finals, at least in my opinion, with the a young talent that they've accumulated, there has been progression. Might not be this year, could be in the year after that. But regardless, I think their window for playing finals and potentially contending for a flag is uh, only a couple of years away. And on the other hand, the Tigers, well, they're in an odd spot. And to be honest, I think there's some dark days ahead. And when I say dark days, I certainly don't think North Melbourne or West Coast level is bad. But they are in a little bit of a no man's land, having traded heavily for Hopper and Taranto last year, and then find themselves well short of the finals race this year. It means that the Tigers are probably looking at ways to rejuvenate their list relatively quickly and there's a little bit of an added incentive here because they ha don't have a strong presence in this year's draft so for a club who in my opinion needs to accumulate some young talent they need to get creative in ways to do that so the latest rumor is that Dusty Martin may be heading to join the Gold Coast Suns with Damien Hardwick I think Hardwick's kind of put this one to bed that being said on the back of the Dusty to Gold Coast rumor there has been a little bit of a suggestion that Dion Prestia might actually be the guy who makes his way from the Tigers to the Gold Coast Suns obviously he started his career at the Gold Coast Suns move for what was pick six back in 2016, the end of. This is coming from SEN uh, via Sam Edmonds specifically, who's reported that apparently there's been some private conversations uh, about Dion Prestio might have a slight interest in going up and playing at the Gold Coast Suns and potentially playing finals again before the end of his career. Dion Prestia, I believe, was an inaugural Gold Coast Sun, which puts him at 1992, which makes him 32 next year. Wow, time flies. This one may have some legs. It does seem odd that a 32-year-old player would follow his old coach to join a uh, club in a completely different state. And to be honest, I don't know how true it is. The comments from Hardwick do kind of suggest that he feels like the Gold Coast Suns have what they need to build for a premiership list. Hardwick's specific comments were, you have to tailor a game plan to what you have here. And a lot of the tools I'm looking for are in this building right now. And he suggests that 80% of the premiership list is already there at the Gold Coast Suns which makes sense. I've accumulated a lot of high picks, but obviously we you know what Richmond had that the Gold Coast clearly don't have yet is that winning mentality. Getting one or potentially two players from a dynasty team like the Richmond Footy Club who are known for their culture, also known for their system. It kind of reminds me when the Eagles brought over Xavier Ellis and then uh, later Sam Mitchell from Hawthorne. That obviously ended in great success for the Eagles, whether or not you can attribute much of that to those players. But it's an interesting notion, the idea of uh, maybe not Dusty, but Dion Prestia ending his career at the Gold Coast Suns, helping them push for finals next year, being another man alongside Hardwick in the same way that Ellis was to Simpson at the time. To try and instill that culture and that belief in the playing group, it was an interesting concept. How likely it is, I have no idea. I can't imagine Prestia really feels like the, the Tigers are going to play finals next year and potentially contend for a flag. So if he's wanting to play in a team that is potentially on the rise, he'd probably favor the Gold Coast Suns, although leaving Melbourne at this stage of his career seems odd. So let me know in the comments what you think. 
There has been a little bit of new conversation around Brody Grundy and the Melbourne Footy Club. We've heard, uh, heard a mixed bag of, of things really out of this situation where Melbourne seem like they're pretty keen to commit to Grundy. And to be honest, it feels like a weird thing to give up on him after one year, considering, you know, Max Gorn is not a young man and one serious injury could end his career. But according to Caroline Wilson on Footy Classified, so you know it's true. She's come out and said that talks have begun with the clubs that are interested in Brody Grundy, and she names Port Adelaide and Sydney. Both of these teams are obviously in the premiership window. Grundy is from South Australia. Mind you, he spent, what, uh, 10 years in Melbourne now? So she's quoted Grundy as, uh, as having said to all three clubs that he has no intentions of playing as a forward ever again, which is strong language. And to be honest, it is Caroline Wilson, so you have to take it with a pinch of salt. But it does seem like the wheels might be in motion for Brody Grundy to find a new club for the 2024 AFL season. She goes as far as to say he is out of Melbourne and it does seem like the rumblings have been there for a while and usually when there's smoke there is fire. It does seem weird for Melbourne to invest in a player like Brody Grundy. I know Colling was paying a big chunk of his salary and that gets messy if he goes to a third club but to take on a player like Grundy on a pretty big deal and then to give up on it after a season well it just seems strange and messy but I guess at the end of the day there is going to be a market for him so they might be able to get away with that. In terms of Ben Mackay, uh, I've recently said in, the, in my last trade predictions video that I thought that Sydney might be a serious contender for Ben Mackay in terms of trying to lure him over as a free agent because we know Sydney are obviously in the window well and truly you'd think. Paddy McCartan's just retired. It's an aging list. They got some sore tolls this year. A lot of injuries in that back line in particular. Ben Mackay would be a best 22 option for him. They obviously missed out on Himmelberg. They missed out on Barras. And therefore you think there is a bit of money to play with. And it does appear now it's reported uh, according to the age that Sydney have displaced the Bombers as the number one contender for Ben Mackay's signature. And this will have an interesting impact on the draft as well, because it is reported that Sydney's offer is likely to meet band one compensation, which would give North picks one and two in the draft. There's a bit to play out in this space, obviously, before the end of the year. But Ben Mackay, assuming he's not staying at North Melbourne, that seems like a foregone conclusion now. It's more likely to be Sydney than Essendon on current form. Then there is young Devin Robertson from the Brisbane Lions, a young West Australian midfielder whose profile has blown up since he got his jumper ripped off in that Friday night clash against Collingwood his subscribers went from like 10k to 40k I had a look and there's about 20 new girls that I follow that now follow Devin Robertson he's a good looking kid so good for him but the trade news that is relevant to him is that it is reported that West Coast have come out and offered a four-year deal to young Dev Robertson who is the nephew of Darren Glass so there is a connection to the footy club and obviously West Coast are a bit bereft of young talent particularly in that 22 year old range that Devin Robertson is he was picked 22 back in 2019 a lark medalist and he's found himself at the wrong club in some respects at Brisbane purely because of the strength of that midfield. It does seem that the Lions rate him. They've, they've kind of crammed him into their team this year playing in sort of defensive negating roles where I think he personally would probably feel more at ease if he was playing as a bit more of a free roaming midfielder. He averages just eight disposals a game but he does a job for the Brisbane Lions and the thing is for Dev, like he is a loyal guy and he wants to say the Brisbane Lions and forge a career there but the reality is they recruited Josh Dunkley last year. They drafted Will Ashcroft. They drafted Jasper Fletcher. Who knows who they'll draft this year, but Levi Ashcroft is shaping to be a top pick in next year's draft who they'll have access to as well. So it's not going to get any easier for Devin Robertson to establish himself as a best 22 midfielder of the Brisbane Lions. And you feel like that opportunity would be very easy at West Coast right now. It was previously reported Dev Robertson didn't want to potentially move back to Western Australia to play for the Eagles who are about to go on a long rebuild. And to be honest, I can respect that. He's right. But we're talking about a potential two-year deal from Brisbane on the table for him and four years at West Coast. And it does feel like West Coast, if that's true, have clearly offered a massive deal to try and tempt the kid. It was reported that Trey Rusco and Devin Robertson and did two of West Coast facilities last time they were both in Perth. So to me, it seems like this one might be too good to refuse for Devin Robertson. Yes, he's going to go play in a crappy team, but that's probably better than a two-year contract and potentially eight games a season over the next two years for the Lions, considering the talent they have. Obviously, as a West Coast fan, I'd love to get him cheap, like you know, fourth round draft pick treat cheap, but we'll see what happens there because if we've offered a four-year contract, we've kind of shown our hand and Brisbane are probably going to say, no, if he's worth a four-year contract, he's worth more than pick 54 or whatever. So we'll see what happens there. We talked a little bit about Tom Dode potentially leaving the Adelaide Crows this off season and he is still without a signed contract at this point of the year. There has been mixed reports around the Brisbane Lions offering a contract. John Ralph's not sure if they've actually done that, but you'd think as a tall 
pretty talented defender, there's going to be a bit of market for him. And he has just come off an ACL like I talked about in the last video. But the latest news on it is that uh, the Crows offer for Dode has been a little bit underwhelming. So it does suggest, and if he's still unsigned at this point of the season, there is definitely a chance that Tom Dode finds himself at a new club. So you'd think there'd be a market for a tallish defender, maybe Essendon if they miss out on Mackay, who knows. But I reckon there's a good chance Dode finds a new club this year. And finally, Jade Gresham is one player that I haven't addressed in my trade videos. There is a chance that he ends up at a new club. I think he's a free agent this year. Obviously, a very, very talented sort of medium forward sort of midfielder. If I was St Kilda, I'd be trying pretty hard not to lose Jade Gresham, to be honest. But it does appear that Carlton, who were particularly interested at the start of the year, it's reported by Sam McClure that their interest has cooled a little bit. Now, it does appear that Essendon have raised a little bit of interest in getting Gresham over to their club. And this would be an interesting prospect because it does kind of rely on Essendon missing out on their other targets that I mentioned in this video, mostly Ben Mackay. But there is a salary cap squeeze at Essendon. Obviously, they still haven't quite signed up Darcy Parrish. There's still haggling over the last 50 to 100 grand per year. So there's a little bit of a merry-go-round here where if Essendon misses out on, on its targets, then Gresham probably becomes more of a focal point. I feel like the Blues, who could use that sort of dynamic forward midfielder in their side, like Gresham, would be a great fit for him. And I think he's a great fit for their list. So it'd be interesting to dig into why they've lost interest a little bit, if that's true. It is Sam McClure at the end of the day. But this one will be interesting because I believe Gresham really is a quality player and he'd be a good recruit for either Carlton or Essendon. Anyway, guys, that is all I've got for you in terms of the latest trade rumors. Let me know in the comments section what you agree with or disagree with and what you think will happen with respect to any of the trades I've done. As always, I invite you to let me know if there's any other topics you want me to uncover in these trade videos. There is a chance that I don't know any more than you, but I can certainly do some digging and see what the latest news is on a particular topic. As always, really appreciate the support. The growth of the channel has been really great lately. It'd be great if you could subscribe if you haven't already. But regardless, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.